A mysterious and fascinating collection of ancient ruins in Peru has been named as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Here are the details. The Guardian reports that the oldest solar observatory in the Americas has been awarded UNESCO World Heritage status and dubbed a masterpiece of human creative genius. Chanquillo is a 2,300-year-old archaeological ruin that lies in a desert valley in northern Peru. Its most famous features are 13 stone towers built around 220 BC. The towers functioned as a calendar that used the rising and setting arcs of the sun to mark equinoxes and solstices. It was also used to define the precise time of year to within one or two days. The site includes an imposing triple-walled hilltop complex known as the Fortified Temple. Archaeologists believe the site was likely abandoned in the early 1st century AD and was largely forgotten until the 19th century. No human remains have been found at the ruins and little is known about the culture. Chanquillo program director Ivan Gezi says the site was built at a time of great conflict and social strife, and the Chanquillo society was the product of a process of balkanization that followed the collapse of the even older Chavin culture. Chanquilo is the third Peruvian site to be added to the UNESCO World Heritage List this century. The status was awarded to Capacnan, a vast Inca road system in 2014, and to Corral, the oldest city in the Americas, in 2009. Scientists studied the entombed remains of villagers and a soldier on the beach of a coastal village in Italy and realized the soldier was part of an elite force that joined in a rescue mission to evacuate civilians trapped on a beach beneath a thundering volcano. Here are the details. In the year 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius exploded catastrophically. Below it, the Roman city of Pompeii and coastal villages like Herculaneum were now caught in a terrible vice. As the volcano blew a gargantuan cloud of hot ash into the sky, the mountain kept on shaking and everyone fled, but for thousands it would be too late to flee. Around midnight, the cloud collapsed, sending its deadly hot ash rolling downward at a terrifying speed. The people of Herculaneum were trapped between the mountain and the dark sea, and out of the dark sea came hope. In the form of the Roman Navy's elite Praetorian Guard, the BBC reports that this is the finding of a recent scientific study of the remains of a Roman soldier found on a beach, next to the remains of 300 civilians from the now-buried town of Herculaneum. Scientists say the coins and objects found on the soldier's skeleton mark him as an officer of the elite guard. It is believed the officer was part of a heroic rescue mission to get people on boats when the beach was hit by a pyroclastic flow. Historians and archaeologists theorize the soldier was probably an elite officer that took part in the rescue mission launched by Pliny the Elder. Pliny the Elder was a famous Roman commander who himself died during the heroic rescue attempt. Mexican archaeologists have excavated more sections of the Aztec Tower of Skulls in the heart of Mexico City and found an additional 119 skulls. Here is what we know about this enormous rack of human skulls which struck fear into Spanish conquistadors when they captured the city. The Mexica, rulers of the Aztec Empire, performed human sacrifice as an offering to the gods. They believed doing so would ensure the continued existence of the universe. The rituals may also have helped control subjugated populations. The Mexica settled in the basin of Mexico and built their capital, Tenochtitlan, on an island in Lake Texcoco. After the Aztec Empire was conquered by the Spanish, the lake was drained and the Spanish built Mexico City on the ruins of Aztec City. At its apex, Tenochtitlan had a population of more than 200,000 people, with some estimates as high as 350,000. The temple complex in the middle of the island was the religious and political heart of the city-state. Most human sacrifices were performed at the top of the Templo Mayor. Tributes, usually captured enemy warriors, were laid on stone slabs. Priests used obsidian blades to slice through the diaphragm and split open the chest. After taking out the tribute's still-beating heart, priests decapitated the body, reduced it to a skull, and carved holes into the side to mount the skulls to wooden posts. The posts were mounted on racks called Tsongpantli, which held thousands of skulls. These were flanked by two towers built from skulls and mortar to form the Huey Tsongpantli, which stood in front of the Templo Mayor. Since 2015, more than 600 skulls have been unearthed at the site, according to Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History. Mexican authorities describe the tower as one of the country's most important archaeological discoveries in recent years. Anthropologists had previously expected to uncover the remains of male warriors at one of the Aztec Empire's holiest sites, but some were the skulls of women and children. This raises questions about human sacrifice in the Aztec Empire and who these women and children were. 
Archaeologist Raul Barrera, speaking to Reuters, said, Although we can't say how many of these individuals were warriors, perhaps some were captives destined for sacrificial ceremonies. We do know that they were all made sacred, turned into gifts for the gods or even personifications of deities themselves. An amazing trove of fossilized footprints in America's New Mexico state tells the harrowing story of a woman and a two-year-old child's dangerous journey around 13,000 years ago. This according to a study published in Quaternary Science Reviews. Scientists who analyzed the footprints can see that the woman was carrying the child most of the way and that she was walking very fast and very straight in muddy sludge. She later returned the same way, this time without the child. After studying the 1.5-kilometer-long track of fossils, the researchers concluded that the woman must have been walking fast because of the many dangerous animals that frequented the area, including saber-toothed cats, direwolves, and mammoths. In fact, a remarkable set of footprints shows that a group of mammoths and a giant sloth stepped into her tracks in the period between her first and second trip. Amazingly, she then stepped into the tracks of these extinct animals on her way back. The mammoths appear to have been oblivious to her track as they just strode over it, but the giant sloth's reactions amazed scientists. The study says the sloth stopped over the human's track and then reared on its hind legs. In the words of the study, as the animal approached the trackway, it appears to have reared up on its hind legs to catch the scent, pausing by turning and trampling the human tracks before dropping to all fours and making off. It was aware of the danger. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.